Oscar's Childhood, episode 21. Welcome, Carrots here. So we've got the new thumbnail. Let me know what you think of it. Oscar is about to move from Chocolate Cake Island to the new boarding school in Moonfall Island. Mina and Eloise have returned from Lucky Palms together and Eloise is now going to take over as the travelling sim. Mina is going to stay at Chocolate Cake Island with a couple of other of the recurrent residents. Eloise will take six of the sims from the boarding school in Chocolate Cake Island to the new boarding school in Moonfall Island where there is no lag. That's why we're going. Also, Moonfall Island is populated with lots and lots of my sims. So it's going to be a much more lively world for them to be living in and they'll be out and about doing all sorts of fun things. When they get to Moonfall Island, they will initially land in the base camp. It's a base camp that I built and placed in the world and it's just a convenient spot. I was very shocked though when they got there to see it swarming with tourists. We've only got a total of seven sims that we're travelling with. Everybody else that you will see in the base camp, they're all tourists. The sims we're travelling with are Eloise, who is the travelling young adult, and she's taking Erica with Wilhelmina and Gator, and Oscar, of course, and Eric, and his little sister, Suzanne. I keep calling her Susanna, but she's actually named Suzanne. And here's the base camp at Moonfall Island. Initially, we've only got the seven travellers. So enjoy the base camp. Well, it's almost deserted because the swarm is about to arrive. Have a quick look over the top. Do you see it's set up? It's got two big rooms that are like dormitories where they've got double decker beds in one and cots and things for babies and toddlers in the other. And at this end, you can see there's a toilet block with bathrooms and showers and potty chairs and all sorts of things like that. And here come the tourists. They're mostly sims that I have made and added to other worlds that are in this game. So. Take a good look at them if you are interested in watching more episodes because you'll probably come across quite a few of them again. Remember, Eric and Oscar and Susanna probably as well are going to be travelling and staying with relatives in many different worlds once Oscar ages up to teen and he will be ageing up to teen within a very few episodes. I haven't quite decided yet exactly how many episodes but I won't keep him as a child until he, the game, until the game ages him up. Once we've had a good look around Moonfall Island, after maybe two or three more episodes, we'll get Oscar to become a teen. So now you can see this area at the front. There's computers and des a desk there for the children to do homework if they're stuck here for very long. And there's a kitchen area with a stove and a fridge and some kitchen benches. And that's a better look at the bedroom where the Oscar and Suzanne are having a pillow fight. Remember we met Phil Oxley, the werewolf, in the last episode? Well, that's his wife, that fairy. She is Glory Flower Oxley. I see Christopher Steele there too. That's him in the bluish shirt, second from the right. Okay, now there's the TV area at the end where the Sims staying at base camp can watch a bit of TV if they want. I've tried to make it comfortable. There's another sitting area at the other end of this area. But there's where the toddlers are going to stay. That's the cots for the toddlers. There's plenty of room for babies and toddlers and everybody who wants to stay at the base camp. But our little group of seven won't be there for long. We're just having a quick look through. The middle room just has bunk beds in it. And the third room at the far end contains the bathroom and a lot of potty chairs as well. There are a few tents and some outdoor cooking facilities on the outside of the base camp as well as a few rubbish bins just in case somebody has a bit of rubbish they need to get rid of. And there's plenty of room out the back for Oscar and Susanna to have a game of throwing water balloons at each other. And the world just outside of the lot appears to have plenty of spawners for metals and birds. There's wildflowers and metals and some birds. That's a spotted sixum at the front. I think it could be a more core at the back. And I found Erica was able to befriend them both, so she did. Usually I find my sims can only watch birds, but those two were able to be collected. So I sent over Erica over here to pick everything up, and she had a look at that mineshaft as well, but didn't 
attempt to go in it. Couldn't see any evil eyes in it. We've seen enough of the base camp now and it's the time has come to send our travellers to the boarding school. This is where they're going to live at least until Oscar has aged up to teen. It's a brand new build. At this moment there is no lag in it whatsoever and I'm wondering how long it's going to take me to put so much stuff into that build that it'll become unplayable. I'll really try hard not to do that. I want to keep it nice and smooth just as it is right now. And once we get to the boarding school then I'll introduce you to the eight sims I found currently living in that building. So we're going to have a household of 15. There's no pets though. There was a dog at Chocolate Cake Island as well as almost 30 sims at one point which is why I had so many problems apart from the massive garden and all the other stuff that was in it. The first sim I found who belongs to the boarding school was Coral Carpenter. She was in one of the hangouts in town having fun playing a game on an arcade table and she's enjoying herself obviously. <laughs> It took no time at all for all of our sims, the ones I just put into boarding school, to head off to the pool. This is the local community pool and it's something I placed there and it is the pool that came with the Katy Perry sweet treat stuff pack. I like to use this pool. I can see Eric, Oscar and Erica. I think Gator and Wilhelmina are there too as well as Suzanne somewhere. I haven't seen any of them swimming previously. They don't have a pool at the boarding school yet. Maybe I'll look, let them use this but they'll be able to go and meet townies because some of the sims in the pool at the moment don't live at the boarding school. There are a lot of sims living in this world. I found that the mermaids that I placed in here have all lost their scales and they're no longer mermaids. This is the kitchen and dining area in the boarding school. The one in pink, that's Isabel Howe and the bloke in the blue, blue t-shirt is Harvey Miller and that is Coral Carpenter in the white t-shirt. She's come home. And the little girl, she's from Barnacle Bay. That's Jeanette Bright. I found her living with the ink beards and when she aged up from toddler to child I decided not to send her back to Barnacle Bay because she just didn't seem to fit in anywhere. So she now lives permanently at the boarding school as well. There's little Suzanne playing a computer game. Bailey Swain is the one playing at the other end of that group of tables. She's She's a teen from Moonlit Falls and she is just about ready to go home I think. I don't quite know why she's still at the boarding school but we will find something to do with her and if necessary we could send her home shortly and bring somebody else here from the Chocolate Cake Island boarding school. just don't want to get too many sims in here right now. I'm also tempted to pick up those three toddlers who live in the mermaid household. They are the clones of Mia Azul and Salty Seaworth. I think the third one isn't actually living with the mermaids anymore. He lives with George Flower who was a mermaid but is now just a fairy. And Salty is in a different world. But Mia Azul and Triton King and Maya Ocean are all in this world. And I've still got a check if those three sims that came from Isla Paradiso are still mermaids or not. I know that none of the sims that I added the occult mermaid state to are still mermaids. They've all reverted to humans. If that TV becomes too popular, I might have to move it to a place where there is more space. Suzanne and Kaylee Flower are becoming acquainted. Now this is downstairs in the bedroom. This is meant for the children. There's enough room there for eight children or teens. I need to sort it out properly because we're getting... Yes, well there's Gaylord Coffee coming in. He's an adult. We don't want him sleeping in here. So I better get this under control. I think we've got just the right number of children and teens at the moment for each of them to have a spot to sleep in one of those four sets of bunk beds. And on the left is where the toddlers sleep in their cots. We don't have any toddlers right now. And Oscar has laid claim to one of the bedrooms that I've set up for the young adults and older sims. Kylie Flower was obviously trying to have a sleep there but he's told her to go away so she did. In the end what I did was I locked the two doors to the bedroom I've set up for the children and teens so that only the children and teens could get in there and each of the bedrooms that I've set up for the young adults and adults etc are locked 
so each individual's got their own room, which will make storytelling a bit difficult, but that's life. Of course, being a fairy with her very own fairy house, Carly Flower doesn't actually need a bedroom set aside for her. She's got her fairy house to sleep in with ocean views. Next morning, we've got Petal and Wilhelmina there playing a computer game before school. They've had their breakfast, they're all ready for school. Well, I've got to get changed in their school clothes yet, but they're just relaxing. But the games don't last forever and soon the school bus arrives and they have to spin into their school clothes and head off to school for the day. And there's the bus waiting for them. I'm going to have to work out how I've got the season set up for this world. I don't like all these grey days. I'd much rather have a nice pretty blue sky with blue ocean. Uh, Oscar decided to take the long way to the bus. Everybody else ran direct through the bushes, not Oscar. The last little scene, I think it's Suzanne, and she's decided she's not going to run to the bus, she's going to walk at her own sedate little pace and make them all wait for her. And there we go, we're off to school. The gypsy caravan is just to the right in there, that's where quite a few of them go to work each day. There's still plenty of things for me to do here to set up this world, because I haven't really played it before. I've just put a few sims in here and left them to it. I did add a school building and they're not even close to it when they get off the bus. I have to give Jeanette Bright a, s a new outfit as well. It doesn't really look like 21st century clothing. And there's the school that I've placed in this world. It seems that I've just dumped the building down. We'll need to develop a playground or something there for them, I think. There's Oscar. It's the last of them head into school. I might age Jeanette Bright up to a teen soon because I'm pretty sure she's done all of her childhood skills ages ago. But just in case, I will check and make sure. There's plenty of room there in that lot to add playground equipment. I'll do it when they're not all in school. Now back at home we've got a few of the young adults working on the computer. Now down at the very bottom we just saw Carly Flower walk in that bottom door. That is the ground level and you can see her fairy house there through the windows at the end. That is the bedroom level and the ground level at the front is actually the third level where the computers are. Now after school Harvey Miller and Jeanette Bright had a little game of tag out on the yard bet between the house and the ocean. Those steps at the far end at the right hand side there near where Jeanette and Harvey are at the moment, they're the steps that go up to level three where the kitchen is. And this is level one where the ground floor is when you're on the, low, on the lower side of the hill. And I'm setting it up with a few skilling objects and there is Erica putting a few things away. She'll be putting away gems and metals into those cub cabinets over there. The smaller cabinet of the three, which is closest to us, is for the insects. That's Gaylord there doing his push-ups, oh, just from a mod that I added. They don't do that sort of thing very often. If they do a lot to annoy me, I'll take the mod out and they won't see that happening anymore. Now, I've already added a basement. I found four of the group science project machines and I found that car in their household inventory as well and in order to get the group science project in I either had to put it on the roof or down the fourth bottom basement because it takes up four full levels because of that high flame that it lets out. Now Erica is starting her garden. As you can see I really tried hard to restrict the size. She's not going to plant very many seeds at the moment. This is Berry Bombay, one of my new witches. I actually had her living in the boarding school. I had a lot of sims in the boarding school but I moved most of them out ages ago and then just left the world not played. It's after school time now and Berry has walked to the school and she's going to play a game with Oscar. Oscar's got a wish to meet a supernatural by the look of it and he's found one. They're going to go and have a water balloon fight at where I'm going to put the playground. So Oscar and his new buddy, I'd like to see a bit more of her. There's a few other of these witches that I made and other sims as well that I made fairly recently and had in the boarding school when I first was setting up this world but then I moved a lot of them out. That's why I wasn't sure when I brought Eloise and the others from the chocolate cake boarding school I wasn't sure who was living in the boarding school here in Moonfall Island at the time because I knew I'd had a lot of sims there but I thought I'd move most of them out and it turns out that I did but there were a couple of surprises such as I'd forgotten about Isabel Howe and the teen who's there at the moment, whose name escapes me at the moment. That was a good shot. Knocked him over. He knocks her over too eventually. 
We might leave that water balloon fight, because they're going to keep going for ages. They're certainly having a lot of fun together. Wilhelmina has been told to go home with one of the little sims in this household. Now, if you've been watching the earlier episodes, you might remember that I told you about Dan Steele. Now, Dan was the son of Patience and Christopher Steele in a game that I was playing way back in about 2010. And I found that old game, and I found in that game Dan was married with several children. His wife is Bonnie. Now, she was also born in game, but I can't find the game early enough so that I could pick up Bonnie his parents or any of Dan's siblings because there were about six children in that family so I've only managed to find Dan, his wife and his children and they live in this house which I've built. I used a mod master controller to add Dan to the family tree of Patience and Christopher Steele thereby giving Patience 16 children in this version of the game. I'm just showing a tiny part of Patience's family tree here just the bit with her, Christopher and their descendants in it. All those children are Dan's and Bonnie's children. Now previously, Patience and Christopher only had one child. He was the youngest of Patience's children. That's Craig Steele. He's a werewolf, because Christopher's a werewolf as well. Now Craig suddenly discovered a long-lost brother, Dan, who's married to Bonnie. And they have six children, thereby giving Patience an extra six grandchildren. I found Dan in the garden at the back of his house, at the lowest terrace. He was imbuing one of his crystal plants with love. He's got a little crystal garden there around his tree of prosperity. Now Bonnie was a born in game sim too, but I've lost the save with her parents and siblings in it. So I've just got Bonnie and Dan and their children. Bonnie is in the science career and her job is mad scientist. Their eldest child is a girl. Anne, and she's a teen. We're going to have to get to know these children because it seems that they are all very actively involved in the residents of the boarding school. Several of the boarding school residents have got to become friends with or go home after school with various of the children and teens from this household. Genevieve Steele is the teenage daughter of Dan and Bonnie as well. Greg Steele is a child and I found him riding his push bike home from school. That little girl behind there standing on the footpath is Suzanne Coffey from the boarding school. And then there's Bart Steele. I found Bart tending the lemonade stand at the Alfresco market. This household was previously not active and I wasn't controlling any of the Sims so I had to go find them when I made them active and then my reason for making them active was just to get pictures of them and to find out their traits so I could let you see who they were because they are beginning to interact regularly with the various little Sims at the boarding school. At least one of the boarding school occupants has to befriend little Bart and of course I shut the game down without saving so the boarding school occupants wouldn't lose their various wishes and opportunities. This was just a temporary foray into a steel household. I'm showing you what I found when I got there. I was very surprised to find Donna Steele tending a humble harvest stand. I didn't realise children could do that. And I was even more surprised when Oscar turned up and started tending another of the humble harvest stands. Remember, I'm not controlling him at the moment. He's just come here. He's standing to attention, being very good. Except he just stole an apple to eat. It's a naughty boy. Oh, she's got one too. I didn't know that. Hiding it behind a bag. I think I saw them get into the money jars as well at one point. So you don't want to let children tend your humble harvest stand. I suppose it's okay if, if they tend somebody else's, sort of. Not really. See, she got into the bunny jar. That's Donna Steele. And Donna is a daughter of Dan and Bonnie Steele. And that's five of them. The final child of Dan and Bonnie is Barbara Steele. We will see lots more of her and her siblings and her parents in future videos while we're in Moonfall Island. And remember, they are all cousins of Eric's. This is inside the Steele house. It is a multi-level house built into the side of a hill, which I built some time back. When I was learning, by refining my techniques, preparing to do my tutorial videos on building a multi 
multi-storey house into the side of a hill. The Genevieve's come in to speak with her little sister, Barbara. And there is Donna. She's about to sit down and do her homework. I think Wilhelmina is in the same room as Donna. She's sitting on a chair doing her homework as well. I decorated this house ages ago. I spent a lot of time having fun setting it all up. As they completed their homework, the children gradually wandered into the large room that was almost empty, except for Dan practicing his guitar skill. That's little Bart and Donna currently as his audience. The house is starting to get the basics. As you can see, those steps don't work very well because the ceiling is the wrong height and they couldn't quite adjust themselves. Strangely enough, the Sims are able to use them. They just look a bit odd to us. Now we're getting further down on another, I think this is well, the second lowest floor level. The bottom level has got a swimming pool. Now, as you can see, the house next door to the left, that's where Crimson lives. And just in case you haven't come across Crimson before, this is Crimson. She's wearing one of those magical skins I got from Moonskin 93. She's fairy mostly, but she's also got aspects of genie, and she could have other occults in her as well. Crimson's main duty in this game is to look different and wander around town, popping up occasionally, unexpectedly. She adds a bit of colour, sometimes a bit of mischief and mayhem as well. She's just a little bit of interest and what could otherwise become a rather boring experience for some of the local sims. I thought it appropriate to introduce Crimson at this point because I've seen her popping up around town already a few times. If you're interested in building into a slope, this is the front door of Crimson's house and that's the back door, but seeing the whole height of the house. And this is Crimson's house on the left and the steel house on the right. And then following the road along to the right, uh, somewhat further along the coast, there is the boarding school. And these are the three builds I did to learn all I could about building into the, a multi-storey house into the side of a hill before I did my tutorial on that subject. So here we are back inside the steel house looking out towards Crimson's place. Wilhelmina's finished her homework and she's now come to listen to Dan play the, the guitar as well. So we'll leave them here. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed and would like to follow this story and others on my channel, consider subscribing and click the bell button to uh, make sure you get notifications. Thank you for watching and happy simming.